welcome to the new season of The Witcher, our experimental Yay. campaign season. Yay. Uh, sure so in this, <laughs> we don't have we don't have an old one. We we don't have an old one. Yeah, we this do. New. It's, um, in the dark web. <laughs> the dark season web zero doesn't mind. exist. Aww. So in this zero. campaign, the continent teeters on the brink of war. We are in 1271. The fates of a disparate group of travelers will become inexorably entwined. Their epic odyssey will unfold across a sprawling landscape, weaving a tale of adventure, peril, and unlikely friendships. The reawakening of an ancient power has set in motion a cascade of events that may shape not only this group's individual destinies, but the very fabric of a war-torn world. Along this treacherous journey, treacherous, 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 treacherous journey. We'll get through the intro at some point here. The very treacherous journey. They'll confront many lurking threats. The, including battling formidable monsters, of course, uh, challenge nefarious villains and navigate some political intrigues, potentially. So we start our adventure in the far northern city of Pont Vanis, where each of you has found yourself stranded due to a new blockade system and travel restrictions imposed by the looming war with Nilfgaard. So, you all Which find one? yourselves in the third one, the upcoming third one, the big one, yeah. one the, the one we've all been waiting yeah. for. Uh, so, we shall the, the take us to Pont Venice. All right. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at that. Oh, the snowy. Port City. Uh, I believe Pont Venice <laughs> is the summer capital of uh Kovir and Povis. Uh don't ask me what the northern or the winter capital is. I don't know, but it's something else. <laughs> I think they move it around. Uh so if you uh you have all found yourselves here and have responded to a call from a person that you are all relatively acquainted with, it is uh the bard known by many names, but who commonly goes by Julian. And uh, he has asked that you all visit him at his vacation home here in Pont Venice as he is planning to travel south along the dangerous roads in an attempt to reach Tucson. So if you could all uh, introduce yourselves as you arrive here in the city, uh, we will start with uh, our newest member of the group, Ophia. Hello, everyone. I'm Ophia. I am a druid that doesn't really belong to a circle. I'm just wandering right now. I'm trying to meet other druids and help anybody I can along the way who has been affected by just everything that's torn this plane apart. Uh, yeah, you can ask me any questions you want. You can start right now you look like no. oh um well i've had really i've had this stark snow white hair since i was 14. um i have really big glasses because the small ones get lost pretty easily <laughs> Mood. Uh, Mood. i don't have a bunch of battle scars because i avoid fights all right all right well then uh an introduction from Casper. I am Casper of Blaviken. I trained with the school of the cat. I'm a witcher. There's not really much else to say. What do you look like? Uh, pale. Uh, a pale, befreckled uh, man could be anywhere from 30 to 40 years old, not really defined Witcher's age weirdly. He has 
very prominent scars along his face, one across his nose here, and one clefting his lip, uh, as well as the signature cat eyes. He also has red hair. He wears uh, lighter armor. Cat witchers like to be fast. Does he have an iconic medallion? He does have an iconic medallion. It. Oh, man. Oh, I wish I had mine. Uh, it's a cat medallion. I actually have one, but I don't. Next I can't time. show it on. Next time I'll wear it. I'll wear it next time. <clears throat> uh, next, we will hear from Mare the Mage Sorceress. Uh, Mare is a solidly five, 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 six uh, uh, woman about about looking about like in her like early 40s uh she's got some lining to her face uh the has the look of someone who's pretty well traveled though she wears kind of old-fashioned uh clothes in dark greens and browns with a heavy fur cloak against the winter cold uh she travels with a simple wooden staff um has a very large satchel that she carries that's full of clinking bottles and uh scrolls and books um very uh, stern, like no nonsense expression. Uh, nothing wasted in word or deed. Very snappy to the point. And lastly, but not least, Kilton. Oh, how thoughtful. <laughs> <laughs> Name's Kilton Espala, merchant from Lyria, on the road, stuck in this godforsaken cold town. Summer capital, my ass. <laughs> well, that's why no one's here. The winter capital, <laughs> which probably be much colder. Um, Kilton is uh, medium height, medium build. <laughs> uh, it's medium man. The workouts Mid-man. he gets is walking around, <laughs> carrying stuff. You know the usual. Uh, big mustache. Does he have an iconic scarf? Uh, yeah, purple scarf, classic, iconic. Nice. Yeah, maybe. Um, the goal is less iconic, I think, in this case. Uh, but dark hair, mustache, um, about 42 at this point, assuming we're starting before June for 14th, if the calendar is correct. Indeed, we are, and that's an excellent segue into the calendar of when we are. We are on February 1st, 1271. And so it is still quite cold here and a bit bit wintry still, especially considering how far north this is. I also forgot to mention Casper is quite tall. You all? (laughs) You gotta gotta be the tallest. You you, you, You gotta assert the dominance. I'm overcompensating for real life, okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I always like to imagine Kilton as half an inch shorter than Casper. <laughs> it's just funnier that way. The whole time. <laughs> like, if you're six one, Kilton's six foot and a half. <laughs> and that's that. Leggy, leggy bastard. If you're six four, he's six three and a half. <laughs> it's just right. All right, so you all find yourselves in the rather... It's a it's a coastal city, so the streets are and it's February, so everything is just mucky and slushy, and the stones and everything in the city is just kind of greasy and slimy from the sea air and the winter. Um, and winter on the ocean, it's just kind of a burst. It's a dismal kind of festering city uh, here in the north. It's one of the larger cities in this area, and so it is kind of a trade capital. Um, which has brought many people through this realm, but it is not the most pleasant place to be. However, as you travel through the city and each find your own way to the vacation home of Julian, uh, you find yourself in a rather nicer upscale uh, neighborhood, a kind of, uh, you know, Renaissance type structure, nice, uh, nothing too fancy. He's still but a humble bard. Um, but he does have uh, a fairly nice little residence here. You see, uh, as you enter into the main foyer, that it is packed up and appears as though 
uh, he is preparing to leave. All of you see uh, Julian, better known as Yaskier or Dandelion, uh, at his writing desk, scribbling away, uh, appears to be signing notes and letters and things like that before uh, his journey. He looks up and greets you each individually as you join and says, please sit, there's some more of you that will be joining shortly. Uh, we should all be here soon. As each of you trickle all in. I see are boxes. Yes, uh, well, it's, uh, you know, uh, not exactly a prime real estate here, and uh, it's time for me to move on. Ah. Uh, to your senses, this is not a... Not what comes to mind when I think vacation home. Well, you know, and I think a lot of the locals, I may have worn out my welcome with uh, some of the finer people here in the city. So I think uh, for all intents and purposes, uh, the, the the road calls and, well, I must journey on. And uh, that is why, is, of course, you are here. And uh, as well as some other traveling companions that I'm looking to recruit as this... Uh, unprecedented time comes down upon us. Please, just make yourself comfortable. Uh, my housekeeper here will bring in some uh, some tea, and uh, we'll be uh, right as rain shortly. The rest shall arrive soon. As you settle in in that order that we uh, introduced your characters, you find yourself in a comfortable but kind of sparse sitting room. Uh, some of you uh, are maybe left with a uh, crate to sit on as most of the furniture has been sold off or packed up and, and stored already. So, you are here with Julian, who has summoned you all through various means of recruitment in an attempt to travel south, uh, to create a caravan, to travel south towards the lush city of Tussault, many, many miles across the continent. And uh, you have the exact all opposite here. side of the continent, as it were. Are we is, are we supposed to be looking at the uh, port map, uh, the port picture still? It is a good question to ask. Sometimes DM does not always hit the right button at the right time and load That's the right thing. Say. So, uh, I, but I, yes, I for this campaign, we are going to be focusing a little bit more on some of the kind of environments and theater of the mind for some things that don't necessarily need a map. So in this case, you can imagine what the rather barren but nice studio of Julian looks like. And I know what a half-packed house looks like. Oh god, do I know what a half-passed house, half-packed, half-passed house, uh, half-packed house. Oh, look at the time. That's half. <laughs> half-passed house. I missed a house. <laughs> <laughs> this suddenly it's 2005. Oh, <laughs> Uh, I don't think Casper sits. I think he probably stands, like, kind of off to the side. Um, I think Julian, having some experience with witchers uh, in the past, kind of just, like, turns and is, like, almost going to say something, and he's like, that's, that's what they do. <laughs> I find a soft, uh, a soft pa uh, package of something and just put it on a crate to sit on, so it's something nice to sit on. Yes, there's all assortments of packing blankets and things like that that are available. You probably find there's still some like rather lush armchairs as well that you might be able to. Oh, there's an armchair. There's an armchair. Well. Hell yeah. Oh, sorry, beat you to it. Hi, Hilton. <laughs> I've been here for <laughs> last twenty minutes. Uh, up. I, I wouldn't have known you. You've been quiet the whole time. Very uncharacteristic of you. Eh, well. Long travel ahead, plenty of time to talk. I'm saving it up for the road. Saving the, st saving the stories. Where are we going? Lanark City? No, somewhere much farther away. Tucson. Tucson. Mm. I know. I'm far, it's far for better said. weather, but indeed is it far. It's a very far. Yeah, the gates of hell have better weather than Venice. I will say. I quite like it. Indeed you would. But uh, am I myself looking for warmer climates, as is your friend? And I, I understand uh, my recruiter mentioned that all of you were hoping to leave this area 
and uh, travel south, and it seemed as though, judging by your resumes and reputations, that uh, I think traveling together as a caravan might make sense. And I myself, uh, as you know, am prolific and well-known, renowned, you might even say, as writer. As all prolific and, uh, people say. As all indeed, prolific people indeed. say. Indeed, indeed. I've always been told that. And I think that, you know, the, the group such as yourself seem as though uh, you might be well-traveled already and might make for some interesting tales that uh, I could take down and perhaps profit off of in the future. Maybe in a book. Indeed, a book or a poem or maybe an epic Odyssey style ballad or something. Maybe I'm not sure. Ooh. See how it turns musical. Out. Maybe a musical. I do like the idea of that. Stage play. I'd no. like to get in on the ground floor of that kind of plan. Well, indeed, you, you already it. have. In oh. fact, being here, it seems as though you've all expressed interest then in, in this uh, caravan <laughs> idea. And it seems as though our, our rather stoic friend, uh, gesturing to Casper, uh, obviously, uh, Witcher is uh, always a good thing to have around these days. Uh, my normal traveling uh, companions are occupied elsewhere. Uh, otherwise, I would probably call on them. But Casper, you seem more than capable uh, of most anything we'd meet. And uh, the rest of you, you know, hmm. Mare, I think I've heard you are well known for your ability to craft and brew alchemical things, as well as, of course, your ability to cast spells. Uh, always you useful. Heard, you uh, heard correctly. And uh, while I don't have any personal experience with you, Ophia, or Mr. Kiltan, I am sure that your work will speak for itself. As uh, as we travel together, I, I'm sure there will be many ballads that will be possible to write about you. Oh yeah, trust me, you need a guy like me on the caravan. Or you're in for it. <laughs> a mouth is what he means. And a face. Well, I've got a mouth and a face in the bar dandelion, but a brain, well, those don't come easy. They certainly do not, especially around here. Mm -hmm. Also, somebody who won't get chased out of town because the husbands of... Uh... Hey, now, hold on now. Legally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big words about Let's getting get chased out of town writing. from a... Sorry. Yeah. Start talking about people's husbands. <laughs> What was that, Ophia? I, think I couldn't we've all hear been you all the way down there. <laughs> I was just contemplating... Uh, I was just contemplating Gasker's comment about it, which are always be something that's good to have around. But I'm open-minded. I could be proven wrong. You still haven't that's let that all. go? I said I'm open-minded. Uh, I don't have a suturing kit, but, um, I know a little bit about the medical field, so that's what I'm going to bring to the table before you ask, so. Indeed, uh, a long journey like this is sure to accrue at least a few injuries, and, and having that ability will surely be uh, useful for us. And, uh, of course, Mr. Kilton, your abilities as a negotiator and a man about town, that's myself even, will be useful in our encounters with uh, the upper crusts, perhaps. <laughs> Any kind of crust you need. Um, so before, uh, as you can see, my uh, residence here, I'm, I'm uh, up and packing and uh, we'll be taking one cart with us. Is there any questions you have for me uh, before we sign on the dotted line, so they say? Is it your car to my car? Uh, well, I have a, a, a caravan uh, that I uh, right. bring things along with where I can store some of my more fine goods, and sometimes uh, I tire of walking. Well, I'm not to... leaving my car, so we'll bring two. Indeed, I think the more the merrier. We Got shall old mule, ready to go. Be able to, uh, yes, have a, a very effective caravan, a, a space where, as we travel, we can, you know, for our goods and provisions and uh, have a, a bit of a, you know, traveling our own little community, you might say. Casper, like, very visibly makes a face. Of all the things I neglected to buy with my wealth, my vast horse. 
I got a I got a horse through secret uh, special surprise. Whatever. Yes. Special surprise. Law of surprise. I got law surprise. I got I got law surprise to horse. I thought you meant a horse in town gave birth and they just you just happened it's upon just there. the it's just yours now. I think yeah, I think the uh, in the in the Witcher world it's now canon that there's the law of surprise, but then there's just a much lesser kind of knock off the special surprise, which is just like <laughs> you found a horse the somewhere. Horsey surprise. It, <laughs> horsey, I always yeah. forget I don't know why the words uh law of surprise always escape me because it is kind of just how much is it's just point? words. Special yeah, special surprise is what you get in the Witcher That's equivalent the of like Cracker Jack. <laughs> the happy meal. I was gonna say the yeah. Cracker Jack, yeah. <laughs> Ah, yes, uh, well, stick cowboy. <laughs> indeed. Uh, well, I mean, if words were easy, my friend, then I would be out of business. So I'm glad that they are difficult at times. So, yes, I think that is our, uh, our agreement at, at the moment. I'm in not a particular hurry. I'm looking for new stories uh, to write a book with. And the more tales that I might be able to fill it with, the better. Uh, so if... It takes us a bit of time to get down there. That is excellent. I have some people I'd like to meet, but they are flexible on their timing as well. All right. When are we? How much are we? Oops, sorry. Uh, actually, no, Casper. Your question is much more important. Please continue. How much are we getting paid up front? And can well, we get it in writing? Of course, in writing is uh, the the way I do everything, and uh, the. Uh, amount is negotiable. I uh, am a little short on uh, liquid funds at the moment. However, I can offer each of you 200 gold up front, as well as an additional negotiable amount uh, once we reach our final destination. Part of the agreement is uh, that we're all looking to uh, make this journey, and so it's mutually beneficial, you might say. Uh, so the value is hopefully offset by that as well. Now we're talking crowns, orins, florins, bizants, ducats. Right to uh, Get it in right. My accounts in uh, Toussaint are able contract. to pay it out however you'd like. Uh, whichever denominations, of course. Of course. Mm. All right. 200 is amenable. Each sure together. Uh, each was the assumption uh, as a kind of upfront cost uh, for your you know, abilities, skills. Use that to buy well a horse as... before, I, before we leave. Maybe 200 each. I'll and use that to buy a... Oh, it's paid out coat. in Toussaint, right? Uh, that, so it'd be 200 up front, so now, uh, and then an additional mm -hmm. amount, um, which you could negotiate on the way, probably somewhere in the range. You, like, from for a contract like this, you think maybe... You know, eight hundred to a thousand upon arrival as uh, individual, oh, like each. Oh, so. that's pretty good. And if a manticore oh. eats half the party, then we negotiate a little higher. Exactly. <laughs> Hazard pay so. and uh, uh, oh. grief and all that grievance pay. Mm. Oh, I go from double digits to triple digits. <laughs> what? What? Uh, what? I had tw I had twenty four crowns. Oh, I had a hundred. Okay. <laughs> you you had double the amount in my wallet. I, I think I still have the most out of all of you. <laughs> Even after... Oh, the mage <laughs> has the most money. I know, right? <laughs> Specialized skills wow. and all that. What? Oh, you yeah. You, <laughs> that guano and leaves didn't cost you too much? <laughs> oh, I bought so much of that stuff. You have no idea. That's okay. I'm traveling with 200 arrows. <laughs> so, you can never be too prepared. Uh, I'm, I am gonna buy a horse before we. I leave. just I didn't even have them. I didn't even Which think I of that. Like I need to get better fucking pants before we leave if I can afford them. Better pants. Better. Well, uh, on that note, actually, so the, I'll. I'll uh, and he begins kind of writing out checks, um, essentially that you can cash in here at the bank in Pump Venice. And uh, as he's writing out the last one, uh, he says, "In in fact, part of the." Uh, Maybe this upfront cost. If you wouldn't mind uh, swinging by an associate of mine, Mika's Oddities and Provisions, she has a, a package for me that I need picked up. If perhaps you could uh, swing by there and, and pick that up for me, then 
and perhaps we can meet outside of town tomorrow evening. Uh, I have an acquaintance that I need to visit this afternoon, and uh, it's a very, very pressing matter. Well, we run into her wife at the... Or I guess her wife works too. I was going to say her Love husband wins. at the bank, but yeah. <laughs> don't, 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 be, sure. don't be heteronormative. Hey. <laughs> Her wife, her uh, girlfriend, her husband, I don't know. All uh, three of them are at the bank. All, yeah, all, all three, three of them are at the bank. <laughs> Let's go. All I know is that the, uh, so whatever... They're opening a together. Uh, she's going to be alone and expecting me uh, this afternoon. So uh, if uh, perhaps you could do me that favor, I would uh, greatly appreciate it. Uh, as long as you have your exit strategy plan, we will take care of it for you. Don't I die before we get our payment. Strategy. Oh, oh, please, we got paid Casper, up I've, uh, I've made plenty of a, a, fa a quick escape out of a, out of a balcony as speaking, needed. Speaking so. of, of exit strategy, uh, can't help but notice that the borders are getting tighter than they usually are. Uh, do we have proper paperwork uh, organized to leave to cross the border? Count on me. I'll take I do count on you, but if he's already got something prepared, I'd like to save you some effort. Indeed, uh, Mr. Kilton is correct. There are still plenty of uh, opportunities for merchants and traveling bands to make their way across the borders. Uh, this far north, the, bar the borders haven't really been closed on land as much. It's mostly the sea that has been blockaded uh, in many spots. So our travel at this point should be fairly unrestricted. The vast open valleys and landscapes here are not exactly the place that uh, Nilfgaard is looking to step foot yet. One can only hope. What about getting in to Dusant? So the further south now we that's... go, the more difficult it's going to be. Indeed. There are going to be quite some challenges as we uh, venture, especially further south. But I have many contacts that might be able to help, and uh, I think at this point, the only opportunities I see are ones that will present themselves in the moment. So... That's my plan, I suppose. Fuck it, we do it live. Plus, we know people along the way. Toussaint's kind of north. North for Nilfgaard, anyway. and North of the south, yes. Lyria's right there. <laughs> uh, Can't be too much trouble. Don't remind me. Assuming have... it's still independent when we get there. <laughs> Knock on wood. <laughs> I, have a, I have an ally in Toussaint. Everyone has an ally in Toussaint. And half of them are in an orgy together. In fact, yes, I think that might be their slogan now. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the flag and everything. No. <laughs> I don't think that's the case. Do any of I you think believe the in the providence? slogan is basically not Nilfgaard. Define, define providence. No, provi uh, the idea that we're fated Prominence? to go to Toussaint. Oh. I'm just saying. I remain, I remain agnostic of the idea. You will be a believer by the time we're. I could be convinced. I don't believe so. Fate. Well, just to be contrarian, then I do. <laughs> Seems fated. I've heard things from people I haven't heard from in years. All pointing to Tucson. Indeed. I mean it. I put a. I put money down on it if I had the money yet. Speaking oh. of not speaking to people in years. Mari. Casper. Didn't think I would actually see you in person again. Why do you think I'd kick the bucket? My old age. Uh, You're taking too long to answer that question. <laughs> count on your fingers, mate. <laughs> Did you... Did you bring any extra books? Did I? I don't know. I didn't buy books with my starting gold, if that's what you're asking. Uh... I had to abandon everything at the last camp. Uh... At my. I am sorry, Casper. I left everything in Oxenford as it technically wasn't mine. It's just yeah, long term borrowing. If you're in the market for uh, 
some reading for along the road, I'd be happy to uh, offer one or two for my library. Most are going to the library here as a donations or, you know, to whoever wants them. So if I've got a few different things. If the two of us could pick it over, that'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, indeed, yes. Uh, kind of like have at it. Casper nods. See, there's some, you, you know, it. your classic thrift store box of books that he has, basically a crate of nothing good. Used books. If, uh, uh, yeah, no, you see nothing, nothing, the... nothing scientific, nothing actually actually useful to the two of us. There's yeah, you see, uh, smut there's and not smut. Uh, a copy <laughs> of A Fractured Land, Tales of the Northern Realms. Uh, you see Book of Fear and Loathing, Volume One. Uh, there Book is, of there Kisses. There is one, one box know. that's just that's just uh, up full of advanced copies of his last book that didn't do all that well. Oh, <laughs> they're all signed. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> The gnome centipede? What's that about? <laughs> <laughs> I, do say, I, do, I do say to Casper, if you're wondering about the research, I did bring them with me. The, the research journals I do have, if you wanted to look over what I've been working on the past couple of years. You know that stuff makes my stomach churn. It's stuff you asked me. It's stuff that you did ask me to research for you. How much of everything did you leave at the camp? You're out, not out of witch's sword, are you? I have my swords. The classic Witcher three sword maneuver. Do witchers carry three swords? I don't think they do. Silver for something, iron for something, steel for something. It's steel and silver. It's there's no iron. Oh, I guess that's. I must be thinking of the new trend. Be more prepared. Have an iron sword as well. That's what I've heard. Iron, are you trying to sell an iron sword, Kilton? <laughs> mm, no, well, I wouldn't say sell. I could be persuaded to rent it. I, tenant. Anything I'm I just, have, anything I have on my person could cleave you in half right here, right now. Most of the I things I have on sword. my person could also cleave me in half. Don't worry about it. Yes, indeed. I mean, most blades seem to be able to cleave most people in half. I thought well, the That's Witcher true. swords were mostly just for the monsters, but... I'd say if, all uh, of them could cleave me in half. <laughs> I, in that same point, my friend, a Witcher himself, mentioned that sometimes Witchers of old would have meteorite swords as well for special monsters of some sorts, which maybe that's what you're thinking of, Mr. Kilton, with the iron. Ah, no, I think it's witches trying to one-up each other, you know. I'd hate to be caught without an iron sword, or five if you want to buy five. But I, I'm not much of a swordsman myself, I'm more of a, a lover and a talker, so uh, I, I won't have any need of things like that. Right. Well, I'll find somebody on the road, I suppose. And I just take, like, a, behind the armchair, essentially, like, this big-ass... It looks like a golf bag, probably. Just, just full of swords. <laughs> clanging swords <laughs> together, wrapped How up. How they're not even in sheaves? Wow, sheaves are extra. Hold How on. How long have you been trying to move those? For what it's worth, they are in one big sheath that's like a golf bag. <laughs> uh, I bought them all here yesterday okay i sold 10 daggers used the money to buy five swords here we are use the so money from the five swords to buy two great swords exactly or a meteorite iron something something i think those Back daggers were best when they were kept off of the streets it's much harder to hold somebody up with a sword than a dagger oh it's okay i sold it to wealthy merchants they hold people up in other ways don't I know it. Sophia. Why? You can certainly hold someone up with a sword. I said it was harder. It's easier to stop someone from attacking you with a knife. Well, hi, <laughs> Ophia. <laughs> don't don't Hello. quite know you. I barely know these two. Um... Freezing her ass off like the rest of us, huh? I, uh, left my heavy coat behind a few towns back, yes. <laughs> so, here well, we are. and I are actually acquainted. We did some work together in Oxenfurt several oh, years ago. what do you know? 
talented alchemist in her own right. And nice to know there's talent in oxen for it Encyclopedic now. knowledge of nature. Very handy. Another, another sorceress. Grand. Nope. Not a, sor not a sorceress. I wish I was a sorceress. I really, really wish. I tried to learn what I what magic I could from well from everybody, but especially Mari. I only know a few minor hexes, but I plan to change that by the time we've reached Jusant even. Hey, that's the spirit. Maybe she I'll know me, a hex. She, she taught me a few things as well. Things I hadn't considered useful before going back out on the road full time. So where is this place that we're picking up your package, Adrian? Julian. 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 Uh, I'm sorry. It's, it's not too far. Uh, it's okay. Oh, no. We've only just met. Uh, <laughs> it's it's fine, really. I have so many names. Adrian. It's as good. It might be. Maybe I'll tell that to the Duchess. Adrian's a good name. I'll tell her my name's Adrian. <laughs> Uh, and anyways, uh, it's, uh, I don't Mika's, know where Adrian came uh, from. <laughs> I know his name is Julian. <laughs> well, perhaps you think my middle name is is Alfred, so uh, Julian, uh, uh, you yes, know, Adrian, a Alfred. They're all sort of yes. Yes. Okay. I don't know why um, I would. I understand. Your sometimes name you know. to be knowledge that I should retain, but who knows? You know, well, sometimes you things just slip out. Yes. So the the package is uh, with Mika. Uh, she's a, a merchant that I've worked with. Her shop is Mika's Oddities and Provisions, um, your standard sort of expedition shop. Uh, it's you're not too far down in the kind of downtown section of the city. Quite easy to to spot. And just tell her that Julian sent you, and uh, that's Julian, uh, not Adrian. Well. Julian. <laughs> oh, and she knows your name, huh? Oh yes, like I said, I've I've worked with is she Mika quite a bit. Payment? Is she expecting any payment, or is it all? I paid. paid up front for the object, so uh, you should be uh, should have it. She said it was ready and uh, ready for pickup. All right. Sometimes she'll even come out to your Did cart you if you park you your cart as well? out in the in front. The right she'll bring it out. Yeah. Flash a, a flash a number <laughs> outside the cart. Yes, and she'll just, she'll just come out, load it right into your <laughs> cart for you. You know, excellent me, customer me service. Last, there. Me last night at Yield Target. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, look at the time. I must go visit a duchess and, uh... Peter nicely. Get the adventure started, I suppose, you know? Mm. Uh, off to the right foot. Um, I will meet you. Oh, yes, I guess I should tell you where I'm going to meet you. Uh, the... My handyman here will be closing the sale of my house, uh, so we are good to set out. I am predicting perhaps a bit of a, a rocky start to my journey, uh, later this evening. And, uh, so I will meet you tomorrow at Moonshadow Lookout. It's a half day's travel or so from the city itself. Uh, you can't miss it. It's a big old lookout, hence the name, Moonshadow Lookout. And it's on top of a hill, and uh, it's an easy spot to... You can't... It's right off the road. You can't miss it. Um, I'll meet you there tomorrow evening, uh, and we shall get this merry band on the road. How long should we wait for you when if you're late? Until I get there, I would hope. I mean, I should, I should hopefully not be late. If I'm more than like a day late, then you should probably come find me back in the city. I mean, presumably something has gone horribly wrong then, and okay. uh, we I would probably need help. Wait a, wait a day, twiddle our thumbs, and then come find you. Go yes, on. I mean, if I'm not there by well, tomorrow night, then city. Where would... something is clearly amiss. So, Julian, it's a big city. Just to get this out of the way, where do you expect to be? If you don't show up, oh, at the oh yes, uh, uh, at the Duchess. Well, presumably either at the Duchess's or in the in the dungeons of <laughs> oh, the, the this Duchess. Long, Duchess. Long goodbye then of the Duchy. Uh, okay. Uh, well, it, just watch she's visiting, right but um, Does she? you know. Oh. So see. I don't know if <laughs> ah whatever. Smaller Duchess from a, a, some sort of Did small, she? you know, uh, I don't know really where she's from or or where she's going. It's a uh, that's not my concern. But yes. Um, oh, Julian, tell me you know her name. Uh, Duchess. Um, oh. is, is what? <laughs> I will learn it and I will write a ballad for her and 
you know, the, you know how the story goes. It's uh, it's not a. Uh, when did you learn it? Try whispering it in her in her ear. I think I think they love that. I've heard. <laughs> I've heard. Hey, Indeed, yes, sir. <laughs> the wrong, the wrong name. Just setting up for failure. <laughs> yes. So he shows you uh, basically. I mean, you're relatively familiar with the layout of the city uh, where the Duchess is staying. It's kind of a big, you know, government building slash inn type place. And he's uh, it, if I'm held up in any way, uh, just uh, speak with my man here and he will be more than happy to facilitate whatever I might need. And his name is Handyman, right? Oh, it's Man here. Man here. Uh, Sorry, what is your name? I, yes, here. my he's not actually here. I'm just talking about him as though he is here. Right. <laughs> here in the, the general I didn't, I didn't know. I thought he was just yes, standing yes, here no. politely. He's the name's Kilton, huh? I'm here. But, uh, he doesn't usually uh -huh. just stand around. No, he's just somebody that I've hired to, you know, help me out. And uh, his name is Hans, H-A-N-S, Hans. And- uh, Hansi man. Hansi, he said it first. Hansi. <laughs> Hansi man. Uh, Casper's already halfway out the door. He's just like, come on. All right. I suppose we should go. The Witcher wants to fast walk, so we'll fast walk. Yes, we will go. <laughs> have, a, have an excellent night with Delphina. I will. I will. I mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for letting me know what her name is. As soon as we're name is it? Is that is that is that actually her name? Or are you feeding him a wrong name? I'm feeding her. I'm feeding him a random name. As soon as we're out the door, I, I'm gonna say, I think I found a name for me mule. Finally, I hadn't Delphine. decided on. No, I was gonna say Duchess, but Delphine is good too. Duchess uh, is a good name. I think we'll go with Duchess. Duchess. Is really good. Her name is Duchess. Or his name? I don't know. I'll have to check. Duke. Duke is a good name. No, he can be Duchess. It's fine. Keep him wondering. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm also in the market by either a mule or a horse before we leave town. Uh, I made it this far on caravans, but it'd be nice to have a creature of my own. Casper has a horse this time. Yay! What's your horse's name? Moth. Doesn't Moth. have a name. Beetle. <laughs> Thank you! Not Thank Beetle. you! <laughs> Yay! Bye bye! It's Casper's horse. He rode. <laughs> uh, rode through the desert on a horse with no name. Oh, I had a mule with no name until just now. Yeah. All right, maybe maybe to... a name will come to him, but he the horse doesn't have a name. We journey to the oddities shop, where hopefully we can pick up this package in easy, quick time. Have time for stuff later. Does she sell armor? Yes, yes. You get the impression from the way that Julian described it that, yes, this is kind of your general provision store. So general, you know, expedition gear, maybe some like armors. Uh, probably oh, yeah. mostly for your like sailor types and uh, <laughs> merchant guards and that kind of stuff. So probably not anything too fancy, but yeah, probably will have some things to purchase. So uh, with that, you make your way down out. Bring it around town. Bring it around town. I like how Casper got uh, became amicable with Mare only to have a new character to be pissy with. New enemy spotted. <laughs> Enmity ended with Mare. Ophia is my new enemy. <laughs> <laughs> We're research uh, colleagues. I do I. not have. I do not have a token on this screen. Why don't you guys chat for a second while you make your way through town? I think I have to give some of you vision. So. Ah. Let us see. Let us fight. Yes, I will need it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I like I like Ophia. I do too. Me too. She's sassy. She has like little she energy. Wants... Is she short? She's she's short. She's short. <laughs> yes. She's half an inch shorter than Kilton. <laughs> <laughs> Just to keep the... no, no. She's six three. She, she's she's six three she's even. Shorter than than Mario. Mario's around like like five 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 six. I think she's. I th maybe she should be half an inch shorter than Mare. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Keep it going. Keep it going. I don't, like I five, five, Ophelia five gives like 5-1. I don't know about you that wish. short. But... Little bitch energy. I just, <laughs> when, I, when I drew her, I was just like, this 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 chick has little bitch energy. She's like 5 I think she's like 5-4. Five, five, she an elf or a human? Something. She's a human. Human? I found out, this is just this little aside, is that apparently, is that apparently they don't want you to, is that the, the guy doesn't, it encourages you to make human druids because um, like races like elves, just, just that's being a druid is just part of the job. Uh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, you're just, if you're an default. elf, you are a druid. No, you have oh, I'm connected to nature. Already. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like that is, what, like that is a, yeah. I love that. I'll just go find a dryad and ask. I'll just simply talk to the squirrel. He can understand me. He can't. You can't understand him. Uh, Casper said, "Fuck nature." <laughs> All right. So as you make your way through the slightly unfamiliar territory of Pomp Venice and into the downtown, find your way uh, with the guidance of Julian's uh, description towards Mika's oddities and provisions. The city here is that same kind of greasy stone, uh, mm. kind of slimy is... with just constant moisture in the air. Uh, mucky, kind of like, you know, like sea air that just kind of like sticks to things, you know, salty, Blind. grimy, it's, it's yeah, it's like briny, briny and briny. oily city. Um, uh, you know, just I'm also just covered covered in, like water. It's all the like, whale oil that they burn. Down. I, don't know. I think uh, All right, Casper and... seems very at home here. He loves a he loves a sea environment. Loves a, a grimy city. What's the he loves a of coastal city. city. Loves a coastal grimy city. Why must it always? Why my, why must it be grimy? I don't know. Just it just fits. It's grime core. <laughs> it's grimy because because again, if you have the soil, it absorbs all the all that gross stuff. But it's just <sighs> it just falls on the, the pavement here. Everything gross. All right, one of you give me a streetwise check. Is not, is not my I'll give a streetwise check. All right. How's your it. How's your streetwise? I don't know. Probably pretty good. I have a, a ten intelligence for streetwise. Uh oh! Wow, you act ten so intelligence. Do, so do I, but I have no training in it. Okay, well I have ten and two do. streetwise, so it's Casper. Yep. So I mean, if you want to do it, you can go ahead. Yeah, fuck it. I said I was going to do it yeah. while you yeah. guys were talking. Go so. Yeah. <laughs> go we for trust it. I'll even put, a, I'll put two luck into it to make myself even with uh, what Casper's would have been. Nice. 18. Nice. First roll. First blood, baby. First blood. Woo! First blood. <laughs> Streetwise. All right. So as you make your way through to this part of the city, uh, you get the impression that this isn't the kind of finer quarter where there's nicer shops. You've kind of left that behind near where Julian's vacation home was. Here you see more kind of wit large warehouses and uh, it's not, the streets are mucky and dirty. Uh, you see kind of shifting eyes following you from alleyways as you make your way through. You get the impression that this part of the city is not, it's the finest of Pomp Venice. Uh, and it seems as though as dusk is kind of starting to fall that the, the streets are fairly empty. You don't really see anybody around these areas. But you do, uh, with an 18, also note that by the description Julian gave you, the building in front of you here uh, should be kind of the backside of uh, Mika's shop. All right. I can Let's... see why he didn't want to go himself. On to the front, then, I suppose. Sorry, cat, cat. Casper, can I just say it's easier to conceal a dagger than it is a conceal. sword, right? You're not going to be pounced by somebody with, if they're coming up and you see the sword, you can run. But if you don't, they're more unsuspecting. Continue was, walking. <laughs> there's, diff, there's different reasons to it's have like a different to, weapon. And you have two swords. Yeah, Everybody can like see that. It's like talking to a wall. You just, gotta, you just have to let it go okay. sometimes. Believe me. I understand, though. Oh, I get a you're... reputable merchant. Pretty merchant. Let's peruse the rare, Let's... the wares. Yes. Maybe I can. And also fulfill our end of the bargain. Where did you guys go? Down the street. The street. Straight oh. down. As uh, as you round the corner towards the flickering lantern light at the front of Mika's oddities and provisions, you see a 
stout looking woman. She is very tall, a full half inch taller than Casper and uh, just very kind of like well built, um, kind of like leaning against the door frame, like the edge of the door. Not exactly blocking the door. I'll actually move her a little bit over here, um, but clearly kind of like keeping an eye out at the front and just kind of like as you round the corner, there's nobody else kind of in view and she kind of your group immediately draws her attention. Pickaxes. Is she pretty? Is she pretty and tall? She's tall. She's, she's yeah, pretty. she's yeah, relatively good looking, uh, you know, compared to most of the people you've seen in Pont Venice. Uh, she seems, <laughs> you know, has most of her teeth. And it's because uh, she's smiling. You know, that's, that's how you can tell. It. Most she's people not smiling. are smiling. She's well, not smiling. <laughs> she's not. I, I would if I no, had but no, no, she's Thanks, not. Thanks, guys. All right, she's not smiling. My bad. Good audio. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were the, the game master. Off. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Game Masters, Kaylin and Lily here to tell me what's good. Zephyr, is she smiling? <laughs> I'm so sorry. She is not. Not at all. <laughs> uh, she, that's, no good. Take backs. See, that's good. <laughs> she is looking well, at you with she... like a like what the fuck do you guys want? But with like with her eyes. You said she has all her teeth, and how do we know that if she's not if she's just uh, like she no, more like a, like a grimacing. <laughs> yeah. Like a, huh? Uh, she's probably like she's like when, when you walk around the corner, she's probably like picking at her teeth, and you can see like she's like you know oh yeah out the oh, front, yeah. and then you know you know picking her teeth with, with a chicken bone. Yeah, uh, she sees you approaching, and she's kind of like, "Oh, what do you want?" Oh, is it uh, after business hours? Yeah, the uh, shop's closed for today. Doing some reorganizing. Right, uh, we're actually here to pick up a package of sorts from uh, Julian. We're not here to shop, we're just picking up. Well, I might be here to sell, uh, who knows. Kilton, go ahead and give me just a, a charisma check to see kind of how her approach to you is. Empathy. No! Oh, oh no! no. <laughs> Oh, that's after the fumble, at least. Could be a, could be a yeah, lot worse. It, it could be worse, but it's still pretty bad. She kind of looks you up and, and down, and she's kind of like, I'm sorry, the shop's closed for today. Did you not hear me, or are you dim? Oh, we're dim, actually. Thanks. We'll come back tomorrow. Casper, go ahead and give me an awareness check. Okay. Since you are where you are. I'm by the window, that's right. Let's go. Nice. Ooh, a 19. Yeah, you actually, your the kind of hair on the back of your neck tingles and, and prickles a little bit, and you hear just the faintest sound of what you can distinctly tell is the sound of a struggle from within the store. You kind of hear a muffled grunt and a moan. Uh, how quickly can I, like, what would I have to do to be able to just straight up slip by her? Because she's not in front of the door. If I wanted to just straight up, like, <gasps> slip by and into the into the building. Not necessarily without her seeing, but just, without like, quick being enough where seen she can't or... grab me. Yeah, no, she could see me. I mean, just quick enough she can't grab me. I mean, you can try. Yeah. Oh, I was right. We are dead. Probably be, like, an athletics check. Yeah, she's look at a she's look at to a robbery. Yeah, whoops. Very obvious. Hold on. Now. What I was thinking, but like it <laughs> didn't want a meta game. But <laughs> I've never been robbed. <laughs> Ooh, all right. Twenty one. <laughs> you are going to basically just try and run in through the front door, then, right? Yep, basically push past um, her. Just gonna slip in. Ugh. So, That's my best idea. He but... is going to attempt to do a. There's not a grapple uh, there. I think, I think it's going to be a brawling, like a unarmed strike attack, basically. 
Ooh, she just barely misses. Casper, you run. Uh, the door is kind of a wooden door with some uh, kind of French window style at the top. The door is locked, so go ahead and also give uh, me a brawling yeah. check to see if, see if you can like oh, no. smash through the like shoulder the door um, because the door this is. This will be the f- funniest fumble when I in- eventually get fumbled. Just brain okay, yourself on the door. <laughs> Boom. Put a few more luck on that. It's not great, but not as bad as I thought. It's enough. It's just a shop door, and it's not, you know, it's just a regular latch. So you are able to smash through the door and into the Does room. Once you get through the door, you go through. Ding, yes, ding, that point. Ding, yeah, ding, <laughs> the whole yeah, the door basically comes off with the bell attached and just kind of uh, flies inside. All right. So with that, uh, we're going to enter into a combat encounter.